Well, it's June 9th, the day after the storm. I got in here yesterday at uh, 2 o'clock. And by shortly after that, it started to rain. By 6 o'clock, it was a full blown blizzard here. Um, it was sleeting and snowing sideways. And that lasted all night. Till this morning, it started to clear up at about 10. Now it's, uh, let's see, it's uh, a little after 5 in the evening and all the snow is melted. And it's actually kind of nice uh, out here right now. There's another store coming. You can see it up at the head in the mountains there. I don't know if you can tell. Way up at the mouth over there. There's a storm coming in. I've been watching it come all day. And it'll be here by this evening. And so this is what the forecast is for tonight. Winter storm warning today until Monday, 4 p.m. Wind gusting to 36 miles an hour. Snow heaviest east of the Dalton Highway. That's where I am. Heavy snow and blowing expected. 5 to 14 inches of snow. So that's what's headed this way. That's just great. Uh, I'm showing you this over here. You can see it's not even springtime here yet. See, nothing is greened up. See all the willows and all the blueberries and all, the, all that stuff, all that undergrowth. Some of that's edible plants, but only if they're green. They're not green yet. We had a late, must have a, had a late spring here, and uh, I have looked and there are virtually no edible plants. I did get to, I did find some freeze-dried cranberries from last fall and ate a bunch of those. They were sweet. They just didn't have much substance. They were mostly seed. And there's my structure over there. You can see the hills behind it. Nothing's green. It's all brown. Everything's brown around here. Uh, there's drying some clothes that got damp last night. That's my shelter. I was able to keep a fire going all night through the what I call a blizzard. Maybe it was just a storm. Managed to say somewhat dry. Felt like the structure was going to come down on me several times. It was blowing hard. I was able to keep a fire going. And that all day today, yesterday evening, before it got too bad, and all day today, I fished. I fished for miles. Um, there's my fly rod right there next to the takedown 22. I wasn't using flies, I was using spinners. You can use a fly rod just like a spinning rod if you put spinners on it. And so that's what I did. Kind of cheating to try and get some fish. But there are no fish here. The, uh, the river has no fish in it right now. The Arctic char haven't made it up this far yet this spring, uh, which I was counting on. And there are no grayling in this river right now for some reason. Very unusual. There's caribou over there on the hill, but I'm not allowed to kill caribou. There's also a doll sheep right up there on that hill. If I zoom in, you might see a white spot up there. Let's see. I can't see him. I can't see him in the viewfinder. I can see him with my eyes, but he's right 
Oh, there he is, right there. See that? See that white spot? It's a doll sheep up on the hill. It's hard to hold steady. Yeah, that's a doll sheep. Can't kill them either. Season is not open. And there's another part of the river over there that also has no fish in it. Right there's the river. And so I did manage to get a couple of little birds. We're allowed to eat non-categorized birds. I was able to get some of those. Um, ground squirrels. There are no ground squirrels here. I sat up on the hill. The best pl way to f get a ground squirrel, find out where their colonies are, is listen for a call. So I sat up on the hill for several hours this afternoon, moving around, trying to hear a squirrel call. If you don't hear a squirrel call, there ain't no squirrels. So I was counting on Arctic char. I was going to catch a bunch of Arctic char and dry them to carry me up over the pass. The pass is over there. The, Ar the, the Continental Divide is up there, about 20 miles away. But if there's no fish here, there's no fish above me. Uh, that's just the way it is. The fish aren't this high yet. And uh, I was counting on this spot to dry a bunch of fish so I could have something to eat as I go up the hill. Barring the fish, I was counting on squirrels. There's no squirrels. That's beside the fact we have a winter storm coming. And to top it all off, I managed to cut myself pretty good yesterday. Let's see if you can see my thumb. It's pitiful looking. Look at that mess. I tried to patch it. That's the third bandage I put on it and it's finally stopped bleeding. It bled all night through the bandages and finally it quit bleeding. Probably, I mean, it's all the way across my thumb. My hands were numb when I was putting up the structure in the snowstorm last night, and I couldn't feel what was going on, and somehow I cut my thumb. So things are just stacking up against me right now. Um, so I've made the decision with this storm coming. Already the river's going up because of the storm last night and all the snow melt that's now in the river. Got the winter storm coming, so I've decided to call it quits on this trip. Um, it's the only smart thing to do. If the rivers go up much more, I won't be able to cross the river. Right now I'm on an island, and that branch of it is the branch I have to get across. It's passable now, but if it goes up much more, it's not going to be passable. And I just haven't caught enough food to sustain me up over the top. So <clears throat> the only smart thing to do is call this thing quits. I hate to do it, but there's a couple other medical issues that I'm dealing with. I thought I took care of them before I left. Flared back up. It's not good. So I'm going to go back to town. And uh, maybe try this another time. If the, if the weather had been normal for the spring, I, I probably could have pulled this off or I would have done a lot better. If, uh, you know, last year, two years ago, I did this trip with Kevin Estella, a friend of mine. We did a three-week trip on a North Slope River, the Sag River. And we caught lots and lots of fish. We were able to catch way more fish than we needed. We caught fish every day. This isn't the case here. We were able to catch squirrels with primitive traps two years ago. It's not the case here. We, we were able to catch a porcupine. We didn't kill him because we didn't need to, but we were able to find a porcupine. If all those things had been 
similar in this trip, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have a problem, except for the storm issues and the health issues. But, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to know when to call it quits. I know, see the storms are brewing. Uh, all around me it's filling in just really quickly. And probably later tonight it's going to be really blowing in here really bad. It's starting to blow right now. I mean, we had light winds all day today and now it's starting to pick up. Um, it's going to be snowing here before long. And part about, a big part of doing this kind of stuff is knowing when to pull the plug. And this is the time for me to pull this plug. There's, there's a chance that a pilot could be able to land in here tomorrow uh, during between the squalls. And if he's able to do that, I'm going to get out of here. If, I, if he can't, I'm going to have to hunker down in there for three, four days till this storm goes over. I'll show you those two pitiful birds I caught. I'm getting ready to cook these two birds. There they are right there. Other than that, there's not much to eat around here. I haven't heard a squirrel bark in two days. I thought I heard a squirrel bark the first evening. I thought I'd go set some snares but I haven't seen or heard a squirrel bark in two days. It's, uh, the rain is coming. There's up river. It's just starting to rain right now. You can see there's you can't see any of the mountains behind that. That's the storm that's coming and uh, might be here in a half hour. It's just now starting to rain on me right now. I got Change the bandage on my thumb. Looks a lot better now. I cleaned the wound and put some antiseptic on there and changed the bandage. I collected up a pile of firewood for the fire. It may not be enough for tonight, but we'll see. Hopefully, there's my fire. There's a that moose antler makes a really nice stool chair. I've been sitting on that. The other thing you can do with those moose antlers is you see that part that's peeling off the back right there? When those, those that's the two sides of the moose antler starting to delaminate. When they get like that you can um, you can chop it a round circle out of the inside of the palm and separate the two layers of the you know the inside and the outside of the palm and make a frying pan or a plate out of that so this would make a really nice plate I was going to do it show you guys how to do that but we're not going to be here long enough so you can see that would make a plate the inside of the palm there would make a plate you just take off that outside piece that's peeling off between the two layers chop it into a circle and you can use it for a frying pan or a a plate. Now look at that. That is a piece of fossil coral. This, these mountains are, that's rock. It's, uh, the mountains are full of those spotted rocks. That's uh, fossilized coral. The other thing I wanted to show you is what I'm sleeping in. I call it a bivouac jacket. What it is, is it's a heavy duty parka. And what I did is, there it is. It, it has a liner in it that comes out. And so you can take the jacket, you can wear it with just the outer shell, or you can wear it with just the inner shell. You can wear it with the two shells together. But what I did is I put Velcro on the bottom hem of the two and I can take the inside liner out of the jacket and invert it, velcro it back to itself, zip the whole thing up just like it was a jack a coat and then it's a sleeping bag. 
it's a pretty slick idea I was this was the first time I was going to test it out this time you, you can you wear the hood for your head you got sleeves you got sleeves so that you can uh, reach out and do whatever you need to do without getting out of the sleeping bag and the whole thing zips up like normal um, I, I'm testing it on this trip and it's fine when the temperatures are what I was expecting I was expecting temperatures of 30 to 60 degrees I've been getting temperatures of from the teens to the 30s and that's a little bit light for a trip like this with the temperatures in the teens at night uh, so I just wear long johns and extra socks and all that stuff and then I sleep warm enough and so there's that a lot of people are going to be wondering what my my uh, medical issues are and uh, I wasn't going to say it because I didn't want to be the butt of a bunch of jokes so there's that coral again anyway I got three minutes of battery left on this camera and I'll save that and show you that storm when it gets here and uh, so that's it for now